Hi guys and welcome to another video. Now this morning I had a remote support session with someone who wanted to set up the Unify network application. This being a replacement for the earlier Unify controller, which we can see here as of January the 1st 2024, the container has been deprecated and no longer receiving any updates. Now you can see here this is the one that's actually installed on my server. So the support session this morning inspired me to actually go ahead and update my container and swap it out for the new version. So I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Okay, so the controller you can see here, it stopped. So I'm going to start it up because I want to take a backup of the configuration inside this container before doing anything else. Okay, so let's go into the web UI here. And it says the connection's not private. That's perfectly normal because there's no SSL certificate. Okay, so I'm getting a 404 not found. Let's try refreshing the page a few times. Right, so I just need to log in here. And so to take a backup, I'm going to go to settings here, then system, backups, and I'm going to click download backup. So with the backup, we can have the settings or the history up to 60 days. I only really want the settings, so I'm going to click download. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to shut down the Unify controller. Now, one thing to note here is I am running this on a custom IP address. That's just what I prefer to do. So with that done, I'm going to go across to the apps tab here and I'm going to search for Unify. And no, I'm not uninstalling this one at the moment. I'm going to keep it there just in case something goes wrong and I need it. So I'm going to download and install the Unify network application, one of Linux servers containers. Now the old container was totally self-contained, but the new network application, it requires a database. If we scroll down here and have a little look, it uses a MongoDB, but I still want to set this container up first and I'll add the database in a moment. So there's a few things I want to add to this container before we start. So I'm going to go across here onto advanced view and under web UI here, I'm pasting in this here, which you'll find in the description, which will allow us to open the web UI. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the basic view. Now here under network type, we've got a few choices we can choose from. We could leave it as is, as a bridge network, which would give the container the same IP address as what the Unraid server has, and it would use the various ports we can see underneath in the template. Now further down in the template, as you'll see in a moment, we have to tell this container where the MongoDB resides. Now, if you wanted to use the actual name of the container, then you'd have to use a user-created custom Docker network. Now, if you remember, I said what I like to do, I like to keep mine on a custom IP address. And for that, we use one of the built-in custom Docker networks. For me, I'm using BR0. And this allows us to choose a local IP address on our own LAN or to use the correct terminology in our subnet. So I'm choosing 10.10.20.2. .10 reason I choose that is because my PFSense router is on 10.10.20.1, .10 so having it on .2, it seems to make sense. Now, obviously, if you do choose to use a custom IP like I am, you need to make sure that nothing else is using it, and make sure it's not part of a DHCP range, and that your router could actually give out that same IP address to something else. So when choosing the network type, what should you choose? Well, personally, I'd either choose Bridge, or a custom IP address like I am here. Oh yeah, and another advantage of using a custom IP address is we've got a whole load of ports here, and using a custom IP, we don't need to worry about anything clashing with any other Docker containers we may be running. So that's another reason I like using a custom IP. Okay, so let's go down here and we can see the database settings here. So we've got a username for the database and it's set by default here to unify. I'm going to leave it as it is, but you could change that if you wanted to. So the user needs a password and I'm going to make it really simple. I'm just going to call it unify the same, but I'm sure you'll probably want to make it something more complex than that when you set yours up. Now for the host here, this is what I was talking about earlier, is this is where we tell the container where the Mongo database is actually running. So here, just pop in the IP address of your Unraid server that's running that. 
For me, that's 10.10.20.200. So I've put in the IP address of the Unraid server where the database is going to be running when we set it up in a moment. OK, so everything else here, port we can leave the same, database name we can leave the same. Now this Mongo auth source here, I'm going to change this and I'm going to put this to Unify. So the same name as what the database name is. If you're wondering why we need to do this, this variable tells MongoDB where it should look to find the authentication for the username and password. OK, nothing else to fill in, so let's click Apply and pull down and install the container. OK, so the container's now downloaded, and we can see it's already started up and it's running. So if we look at the log here, we can see here it's waiting for the database to become available, and it isn't. So it's basically telling us it can't proceed. So let's shut down the container and install the database. So let's head back across to the Apps tab here and do a search for Mongo. And we're going to install the official MongoDB here. OK, so everything here I'm going to leave as default and just click Apply and pull down the container. And we can see the database running at the top here. Now some people, they like to create an initialization script to create the database. Personally, I think it's just easier to create it manually. So to do that, we're going to click on console here and I'm going to type mongo sh and that brings us into MongoDB. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type use space unify and then a semicolon. So what this will do basically is it's telling it to use the database unify and what MongoDB does, if it doesn't have that database, it basically just creates it. So I'm going to hit enter and we can see here now it's switched to the Unify database. So what we need to do now is we need to create a username and password that's allowed to use this database. Now all of these commands you'll see in the description of this video and you can see here for the user, my user is Unify, the password is Unify, exactly what we put inside the Unify container. So with that done, I'm just going to hit enter and you should see OK1 if that user has been created. Now one thing that we may as well do is have a look at what users we can actually see. So I'm going to type db dot get and then with a capital U users open close brackets and a semicolon. OK, so we can see here that this is the user that I've got inside the Unify database, so everything's good. So that's all we need to do. We can now close the terminal window and start up the Unify network application. So I'm going to open up the log straight away. And we can see here that it says it still can't see the database. Now this is because I'm using a custom network for the Unify controller, giving it a custom IP for me here on 10.10.20.2. So if we go across to settings here and go to Docker, I'd need to have this here, host access to custom networks, I'd need to have that enabled. So I'm going to stop the Docker service and I'm going to enable this and start back up the service. OK, so host access to custom networks is now enabled. And if we go back to the Docker tab now, let's start up the database. And with the database started, let's start up the Unify network application and let's have a look at its logs. So here we can see it's now got past waiting for the database to be reachable. At the bottom here saying no custom files found skipping. So everything's working. It's all set up, ready to go. So now it's running. I'm going to click here and go to web UI. And because we put the additional setting in earlier, we can open up the web GUI. Just as before, we don't need to worry about this warning. We can just continue. It's just because we don't have an SSL certificate for this actual Docker container. OK, so here we are on the initial setup screen. So if you're setting this up for the first time and you're not actually migrating from a previous Unify controller, well, you can go through the wizard and configure everything to your needs. But for those of us who are migrating from an earlier container, well, we haven't quite finished yet. What we need to do is we just need to go to the bottom of the page and click on Restore Server from a Backup. Then here we click on Upload Backup File. Then just select the backup file which we dumped from the original container earlier. So here we're just being asked to confirm if we want to go ahead and of course we do. Okay, so I've restored my backup. 
and I now should be able to log in with the username and password from my old controller. Okay, so here we are into the new software. You can see here my two Unify access points. Status saying it's getting ready. Okay, so the controller can see them all properly online now. Now I hadn't run the old controller for quite a long time and I can see here there's a couple of updates so I may as well update my Unify access points now. In fact, it's the perfect time to do it right now because all of the family's out. You know what it's like guys, you know, if the Wi-Fi just goes down for a few minutes nowadays, you get in trouble. <laughs> Tell me in the comments below if it's the same for you. Now I'm sure watching my Unify access points doing their update is only a little bit more exciting than watching paint dry. So let's wrap up this video now. But before I go, if you enjoyed this video, if I could ask if you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And also, if you think any one of your friends, they might find this video interesting, then please share it with them as well. Now I want to give a big thank you to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you guys for all of your support. It really does mean the world to me. In fact, without you guys, I really wouldn't be able to make these videos. And anyone who wants to join these great bunch of people and help support the channel, then you can find links in the description below. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.